value of placements is well known and meaningful encounters in the workplace helps to create an early work ethic. It worked for me, it's worked for my own children and I hope to help other young people in my position as Member of Parliament. I think one of the misconceptions about Cumbria is that there aren't as many opportunities for young people as there actually are. We have an incredible range of career opportunities in Cumbria, but it's only really when young people get to experience through meaningful encounters that breadth of opportunity and the broad range of diverse career choices that they can actually imagine what they might do in the future. Events like this make you realise that there's more companies out there than Sellafield, BAE and Gen2 and places like that. You don't realise the smaller companies, which are actually massive in reality, you don't know they exist. And just finding out that there is more companies out there to look up and research and find jobs for. And it was an eye-opening opportunity to see all those jobs on that screen, see all the companies thinking, well, what do they do? I didn't know they, you know, they were existed. I think Dream Placement is pretty unique, really. And it, um, it brings organisations from across Cumbria together because we're all trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to look for our future workforce, for the best talent across Cumbria. Engaging in this kind of activity with these kind of students, encouraging them, giving them the opportunity to see what we offer as a company. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to really um, pick the cream of the crop if we want to. When these, when these students are finished up, they often come back to us looking for apprenticeships graduate placements, all that sort of thing, and it's always been a fantastic opportunity for us just to get them come back and work with us. It's when I was younger there was nothing like this around, so I think that this is perfect for, for Cumbria, um, to give companies the opportunity to see what young talent there is around, uh, try and keep them in the county rather than going elsewhere. When you get to meet the young people and get to hear you know, what their ambitions are and what their dreams are for Cumbria, it's very exciting and we just want to make those things happen. Uh, so it's about empowerment, isn't it? It's about empowering young people, raise, you know, raising their aspirations, meeting their aspirations and letting them know that actually they don't have to leave the county if they don't want to, to have an absolutely amazing career with some incredible companies. around the, the scope of what they do, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, basis from the project management side to us as the engineers and then down to the operators and the actual hands-on work that we've been doing within the facilities. This, for this week we've had Dominic down at NSG's head office. Um, he's having a, an interview with our director. Uh, we've brought him up and we're going to give him a bit of a scope, get him into, into the facilities We've got them down at certain levels now where we can get Dominic actually into the magazine to show him the work we've achieved over the past five years. Today and yesterday has been like familiarising myself with the LLWR, um, what, what the team's been doing here the past five years and what they're going to do for the next few weeks here. So I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. I think, I think the interview with the MD was very good. Uh, obviously he told me about his journey to become a person in a position of leadership. I've been with Trudy Harrison MP and we've basically just been shadowing, a mix of shadowing and doing some little odd jobs, getting a real atmosphere about the workplace. What's been the best part of this week? Best part? It's probably just just getting atmosphere, like more of an insight to the workplace and more of an insight of what actually happens in an MP's office because I hadn't 
I thought I had an idea, but I, I really didn't. Good afternoon, Trudy Harrington's office. Hello, I'm speaking. So we've seen two debates. One of them was in the House of Commons, and that one was about the future of trade, so that'll be after Brexit. And that was being headed by the Shadow Secretary of Trade. And so, yeah, we previously met him as well, had a little conversation. I didn't even know it was him before that, so that was, that was fun. And then Trudy also had a debate, which was about small modular reactors. And that was really, you know, linking the two, the community side of the dream placement and the politics side. I feel like each of the roles we've taken on have had the element of leadership. You know, we've had to take on our own roles and had to sort of allocate them to ourselves. And that was us doing that. You know, we were leading. It's been really educational in the way that we've learned about all the different leadership styles that are in one university and how all of them are similar. All the different leadership styles are under like one place, but they're all different at the same time. What did you gain from speaking to the leader of the Ambleside side today? Just that communication is really important and you need leadership in a lot of things to make things work and run smoothly, but also teamwork's a big aspect as well. It's given me a, wide, a, like, a better idea of what I want to do because I want to be a children's nurse. So when I was talking to Linda before, when actually I was thinking maybe I should steer away from things that are too time pressuring, when she, really she said there's not, there is things that needs to be done but it's not under so much pressure when you're not, because there is a lot of people around you that can help. Like it's not just going to be me on the award on my own. Um, so give me a scope, like I'm more chilled about it now. And excited. Yeah, I definitely agree that it's invaluable because in the end, we've kind of if we'd have been on our own trying to get this kind of one-to-one -one conversation with people in the HS, it would have been an e as easy as it is to just know that our host knows that we want to do go into medicine medical fields, and so they're able to organise something that we wouldn't have been able to do on our own. So you think it's worthwhile giving up your week's holiday to go on dream placement? Yeah. Yeah. If you can get past At the morning. First, I'm not going to lie, Sunday night I was thinking, do I really want to? Because I really want to get up because I'm quite lazy sometimes. But then, no, it's definitely worth it. Because I'd, I'd, I'd literally, and probably a lot of people that would want me to, if I didn't do something on the holidays, I'd literally be sleeping until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so you just get you out there, be more productive. So this is a more constructive way to spend it? Yeah. yeah. Just realising that I actually really enjoy engineering and I enjoy working around solutions and it's kind of solidified what I do want to do um, because I know what it's going to be like after I've studied. What have you been doing so far this week? Lots of problem solving and working things out and thinking you've got something right until another problem comes in and you've got to change the whole thing. So just designing things really. You've been trying out some of the ROVs and remote vehicles yeah. today. What mm -hmm. are they like? They're really interesting. I think I still find this the most interesting though. I don't know why. I know it's the most traditional, but ROVs are interesting and so are drones. Yeah. Would you like the digger? But I like the digger, yeah. I've enjoyed it all really, but the thing I've most enjoyed is just the task that we've been doing throughout the week is uh, involves a lot of design stuff, which um, I found like really enjoyable. I've also enjoyed coming into places like this and like having a go with a lot of the equipment that they use. And do you see yourself working in this sort of field in the future? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the main reason I applied for Dream Placement, really, was to sort of uh, come into places like this and get a taste of what it's actually like here and see if I'd, in, I'd really enjoy it, which uh, I have done. What was the most surprising thing about the whole process? Um, to be fair, the fact that I even got a placement, I'm going to be honest, on the selection day on the interviews, I did think, I don't know why I'm here, like, I'm not going to get a placement, but um, I was surprised when I got one, so that was probably the most surprising thing. And do you feel you've learned some important stuff from taking part? Yeah, definitely. Not even just, even if I didn't get a placement, learning, like, you go on for the interviews and not even just the so interviews, the like activities that we did before it, learning when Bernie said about that balloon and the different sides to yourself. It does give you the encouragement and the confidence to go into the interviews and think, maybe I can do this. It's been amazing to see all the central services that they've got in the company. So the HR, the training and leadership, the payroll, the 
invoices, the accounts, they're all part of the company that I didn't know were first in the company. But a massive company with over 700 employees needs all of them. Why did you nominate Story Contracting for your placement? Um, because when I had been interviewed, we were talking about project management and civil engineering and they're the only company that I had not view with that could have gave me experience in that. And if I want to do that as a career in the future, then I should get some experience in it. Each day I've been doing something different. There's been no two days the same. I've been with different people every day. So I've got to ask them how they got to where they are now, what their path has been, what they'd like for the future. and. A lot of people have given me an insight into what they've done and the different ways and paths that can lead you to get where you want and that it's not just, you don't just have to go to uni, you don't just have to get an apprenticeship, there's loads of different ways that you can do it. And what would be your advice to anyone thinking about dream placement? Definitely go for it. Think about your application, try and put across your best foot forward and um, if you're lucky enough to go to the interviews, try and wow the companies and show them why you're interested in their company and what you could potentially bring to their company.